Hello, this is Samir and today I provide you with information about grids. So let's take a look at a two-dimensional example of a grid. Naturally, it consists of grid cells. In this case, we have a four by four grid, which means along each dimension there are four grid cells. And we already know grids from applications like Photoshop because any image let's say with a resolution of 800 by 600 it's just a grid with this amount of grid cells along each dimension. This concludes that pixel is just another term for a grid cell. Alright so a pixel can store a value we all know that from Photoshop for example and this could be an alpha value which is just a floating point value or it could be a color value so three floating point values. A single floating point value could be interpreted as smoke density or temperature or fuel amount. And three floating point values could be used for a color or a position. It's just a matter of interpretation of these values. And as you can see, there's a term called scalar, which is just the same as floating point value. But it's shorter, so it is sometimes used in the framework. All right, but let's take a closer look at a grid cell. If we assume this is a smoke grid, what we see here is an empty cell. Putting in some smoke density, it would store a value of 0.25, so 25% filled. If we go higher with that value, we see it is now much denser and it is about 75% filled. The same happens for colors. There are just three floating point values, three scalars stored in the cell, which then are interpreted as color. These values can be stored at different locations inside the cell. For example, they can be stored in the center of the cell, which all the grid channels do, or at the corners of the cell, where all our volumes are storing their values, or they can be stored at the edges or walls of that cell which the dynamics are using for the velocity field and we can see that this also says edges and faces because in 3d we have faces instead of edges and in 3d it's not called a pixel anymore but a voxel which comes from the word volume pixel and of course this all happens in a 3d grid But once again, we return to the 2D version of a grid, just for the sake of clarity. We see two grid cells filled with values in this grid. Can you imagine which shape has emitted these values into this grid? I don't think so. But if we lower the voxel size, we can clearly see that we get a lot more details. And we can imagine a shape much better. So, this tells us a lower voxel size, lower grid cell size, results in a higher resolution. That's also the case for the framework. So if you want more detail in your simulations, for example, you need a lower voxel size. But let's switch to Cinema 4D to show you. I create a volume and put it inside the effect scene. Then I create a landscape object. I make it spherical and scale it down a little. Well, then I put it under the volume and I link it in the mesh object field in the settings of the volume. Now the volume has been instantly created, so I turn on the display and I probably switch to the side views and I set the drawing mode to voxels. So it will show us the voxels that are holding values for the volume. And as we can see, we have a pretty high voxel size, so low resolution. If I lower the voxel size, you can see that the shape of our landscape is approximated much, much better. Let's so maybe put it down a little more. And this gives us a pretty detailed shape now of the whole volume. So each of these voxels is now holding a value that gives us information about the volume, if we are inside the volume or outside the volume. 
or remaining volume based object like multi volume construct of solid geometry and surface reconstructor they're all working the same well, let's take a look at a channel and we start with the scalar channel so floating point value channel and we remember that this is just another container this directly is a grid a custom grid that you can fill with any information to do so we need an emitter which fills this container grid with information so we choose emitter grid put it under the scalar and we look at the parameters of the grid emitter and it requires a volume which we gladly have and it requires the grid channel that we would like to fill with information so we click on that standard setup button and it will generate a channel settings container down here which takes the emission settings and the channel we would like to fill furthermore here in the emission settings we have set a value of 1.0 and we choose shot to do it per frame instead of per seconds we can see the result of that emitter now in the viewport just making it more absorption so we can better see it and also here I lower the voxel size so we get a better approximation of the input shape so we have now filled this grid container with information maybe it is smoke densities so let's lower the absorption to make it appear like smoke but that's just one interpretation and for now this scalar channel does not do anything it just holds the information for us but all right we get to a purpose for this one later let's just try this with a vector container as well so I put it down here again and also for this one we need an emitter and I show you the second kind of grid emitter we have it's the accelerator it's just a more low level version of the grid emitter so here it has also been put into the pipeline viewer and it needs a grid channel we choose the vector we have and uh, it needs a cell operator so now we are operating per cell and not on the whole grid with this one I choose cop math this one will allow us oh, it should have been put there automatically so we drop it here manually and we instantly get a preview here which is drawn by the vector channel by the way because it was filled by the emitter with a value of 1 no if I said O2 why doesn't it change because it is a vector channel so we switch the vector value but even now that doesn't change the reason for that is that our display is not yet set to a color mode so now is the interpretation that this is a color and we can see if we change that values that we are emitting into the channel we get the according color display now well but I don't want it to be emitted everywhere but only where the volume is so I go into the volume and click the CS volume button this gives me a constraint for that volume so I can constrain the emission to the inside of the volume there we go turn off the scalar channel and what I could do is either use a source channel here or I could create more constraints like a noise constraint here Let's just try this and scale it up a little a little more and we can see how the color is varied here all right but let's go back to our cop math so this is working on a lower level than the emitter grid and the same happens and can be done for the temperature and fuel and fire channels it's just the same they're just a little more specific all right let's get to our dynamics which are also using a grid for the velocity field and we put it down here again well these are bound so I gotta move this one to have our source inside these bounds uh, let's go into the top view it's much easier center it up 
update. There we go. So now that we have this set up, I will get rid of the vector channel because I would like the scalar field to be smoke and I would like to push it downward. And then I can show the velocity field grid of the dynamics. But first of all, we need a grid force. I use the external one. This just inserts a vector into the velocity field. So wind force, if you want to see it like that, it is pointing downward, but I would like it to be evaluated only inside the volume. So I create, again, a constrained volume, put it down here, and a constraint uh, force with it. So this force will only have an effect on the velocity grid inside our landscape volume. Let's try this and click play and we will see that nothing happens. And the reason for that is that our container, it doesn't do anything yet. So we need another node that moves our information inside the grid. So I click on the create a vaction button and it will create a grid operator called the vaction, which is just another word for transport or movement. And we also need another pipeline stage here. I put it to channels at vaction because that's what it does, advecting the values of a grid channel. So maybe I put a better integrator mode, but that's it. I could now click play and we will see some movement now here. Our smoke is moving. The values inside the scalar grid channel are moving. Maybe I could use a higher force value All right, maybe it's now too many sub steps, so I lower this simply for faster execution. And we will see now that it indeed is moving. But it is looking strange. Why is that? And this is the perfect occasion to show you the velocity grid that is inside the gauge dynamics. So let's turn off the smoke field here, go into the dynamics display tab and velocity motion field we set to x and it will draw a slice of velocities as we can see here maybe you go into the front view as well so we can also see the voxels here and we can see kind of arrows or directional lines emerging from the center of these voxels but if we take a close look at this velocity field, which is just a grid, as I mentioned, if I click play, we can see that these velocities are not changing. They're expanding, their extent expands, but the motion itself is not moving. So what we need is to make this move as well. And for this, we also use a grid operator advection because that's what it does. It advects a grid. So, but what we need here is to change the pipeline stage to advection. So for our dynamics, we're always advecting before the dynamics operate themselves. We also clear the grid channel here because we want the velocity to transport itself. And if we now click the play button, we'll see a different outcome. So now we can see that here vortices are forming at the sides, that the motions are really doing something and are moving and are actually transported. Nicely seen here in this slice, but if I turn on the smoke channel, we can already see that the smoke is now moving as we would expect it. And if you have noticed, we have just set up a fluid smoke simulation. So there's not much to it. And once you know how the framework works and what the grid based objects do, it's pretty easy to understand. I hope this was helpful and hope you check out our upcoming video tutorials on more fundamentals. See you soon.